I say something before we begin? Yes, of course. So last time I was here seven years ago, and a lot of you already heard me say this, but I was at this very arena seven years ago, and it was a Newcastle Sunderland match that weekend. And I genuinely thought someone was going to die at the bar we were at. Y'all take that stuff very seriously. Me too. Who who, who is a Newcastle fan? Who here is a Sunderland fan? (laughs) Okay. Oh, snap. Okay. All right. The chaos ensues. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh! <laughs> have you noticed yeah. that? I mean, are you into any sports of your own that you have, like, really a pride for a certain team I like I like American football, yep. and I like hockey. Uh, so Denver Broncos and Colorado Avalanche, but uh, and, and, and Denver Nuggets to some degree, but uh, yeah. not as much of a basketball fan. What about you? Right. Oh, I'm allergic to sports. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, okay, I am. Okay. For, I have a doctor's note. I, I do watch <laughs> wrestling. That's why we were joking about playing wrestling things. Other than that, I'm not a huge sports person. But, yeah, it does get very competitive. Are, how about your Denver Broncos fans? Are they, uh, they, are they a docile group? Or yeah, no? we're pretty chill. You know, we've got, we've got weed and everything there. So we're just <laughs> like, yeah. We get the mountains. If we don't lose, we're like, okay, let's go skiing, you know? Yeah, yeah so, yeah. That helps. That definitely helps. Just saying. Well, obviously, we have a lot of Walking Dead fans here. And I want to point out, we've got some amazing cosplay uh, what's it like to see all the cosplay, first of all, from The Walking Dead? Because so much effort and passion goes into it. I know you probably really appreciate that. I do. I've I seen a lot of Negans and some Judiths here and some, some uh, what did I see here earlier? I, I, saw, I, saw, I think I saw an Abraham walking around earlier, but I don't know if they're here right now. But it's, it's awesome. I mean, I remember the first time someone tagged me in a Aaron cosplay, yeah. and it was this guy named Connor. And he's based in San Diego and really got everything down to a T. Ended up emailing our costume designer and asking exactly who made each one of these pieces of clothing. And, and she obliged. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, just a, it's, just a, it's an honor, really. I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty wild, yeah. Especially with the attention to detail. That's what we're always very, very impressed with. We have uh, our cosplay championships coming up right after this. So best of luck to anyone that's involved with that today. But The Walking Dead, I mean, the fandom, obviously, as you can see, it's a global fandom all over the world. Tell us about the loyalty of The Walking Dead fans, because they take it real seriously, as they should. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I was a big fan of the show before I got on it myself. I remember that first Halloween episode in 2010, uh, I remember watching it with my friends and just being blown away because it was like uh, unlike anything on TV. It felt like a movie, you know? Um, and I think the reason why the show lasted for 12 years is because it dealt with really universal themes about love and struggle and loss and survival. And I think anybody around the world can relate to that, you know? So. I think it's very story, story driven, which I think is what touches so many people. Um, but for your character in particular, you know, we're coming up on Pride Month, yeah. and I love that the show has progressive tones in that way with your character in particular. Yeah, yeah no, it was, it was such an honor. I mean, getting to play Aaron with Eric and Jesus, and then we had, of course, Yumiko and Magna and uh, Tara. And, and I just think the, the thing that we did really well on that show was representation and diversity. Like, we have everybody represented on that show, and I think that that's another reason why it was so universally loved. Yeah. And that's why it's, it spans a little bit. It spans different generations as well, as you can see. You oh, know, yeah, young I've and had old. three-year-olds and 80-year-olds <laughs> watch it. They come up to our table, and they're like, we love your show. I'm like, you, you're a three-year-old. You were watching The Walking Dead? Like, oh, my God. Like, whew, that's pretty wild. I, I couldn't deal with it at that age. I know that, yeah. 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 Oh, I started watching around like 35, and I was like, oh, that's a lot of blood. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you a fan of that sort of genre? Because, I mean, some people are squeamish, oh, yeah. but were you a fan of like horror genre? Because I, I, I've interviewed many of the cast, by the way, one of the nicest casts we've had at Monopoly Comic Con. Everyone, Tom's here a lot, just the sweetest people. But they always sort of, not correct me, but they remind me that it's really not horror, the show. It's, you know, it's a story-based show, character-driven show, but it does have some horrific events that take yeah, place. Yeah, that's a good, I mean, I, I think at, the, at its core it is a horror show because it's a zombie show, you know, and yeah. people get their arms ripped off and their faces bit off all the time, but uh, that's pretty horrific to me, but I, I see what they mean. I, I think it is like, it's kind of like a, 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 a drama that just so happens to have the backdrop of zombies. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I see that. And shooting that, was that something that you, I mean, was it, were you ever squeamish? Were you ever actually afraid? No. Because you're it's late at night, you know? I mean, like, nah, yeah, nah. Like, I mean, the, fir- the first week, I remember, like, I was nervous as hell because it was one of my favorite shows and then I got on it. But uh, I remember the first week of shooting, there was, a, there was a, a walker that sat in front of me in the cafeteria and he took out his dentures, like, these massive, like, mandibles to put on the table and they're just covered in slobber and everything and he put them on there he's like oh sorry and i was like oh god like that was 
A, super gross, but then like it, it humanized him in a way that like I never got scared after that because like I was like that was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my That's life. Crazy. Because he had the context and he, I mean, they look terrifying. Yeah. They do such a good job with the special effects makeup on that show that you believe this is a real walker, and yeah. then they take out their teeth, and you're like, oh yeah, there's a human under there. It's just I forget. Bill under there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Bill. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like seeing Mickey Mickey Mouse without the head or something. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously we're gonna get into the Walking Dead and get those questions ready, guys. We're gonna ask for them in just a moment, but I need to fangirl over something. So because I was lightly stalking you on the internet, as I do, okay. I realized and remembered that you were in two episodes of a show that I love called The Last Tycoon, and it's a show that on Twitter everyone always says. <laughs> You know, what show would you bring back? And I, I'm talking weekly. I'm like, I tag Matt Bomer. I thought it was an amazing show. Kelsey Grammer. Lily Collins, a.k.a. Emily in Paris, for the ladies in the house. Um, tell us about working on that show. I mean, I, th I thought it was an amazing show that I wish they would have brought back. I couldn't agree more. I mean, like, I, I got really lucky. And um, I just had a few weeks off of filming before we went right back to filming The Walking Dead. And it just kind of worked out perfectly with my schedule. I got to play The Prince of Wales. Uh, and and it was a, a lot of fun. I mean, I don't, any Prince of Wales fans out there? <laughs> I was like, ah. All right, hell yeah. No, but like the OG Prince of Wales, not the OG Prince of Wales, but like from the 1800s, yeah, 1800s Prince of Wales, well, maybe early 1900s Prince of Wales. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, it was, a, it, was, it was so much fun to do, and I love, whenever I get a chance to do accent work and character work like that, it's always a lot of fun. The only downside of that was that I had to shave very close to the face, and I hate shaving. I like having my beard. This guy gets it. Yeah, beards are the way to go. You know, if you can grow a beard, it's the way to go. Also, if you're lazy like me, I hate shaving. So, yeah, exactly. Strong so that beard was, game. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Also, working on a period piece, I'm sure, was kind of interesting, right? I mean, oh, like yeah. the costumes and things. The costumes uh, were, were really wild because, I mean, you, you su you'd be surprised by how much they help inform your movement because yeah. they're so stiff and you're wearing these shirts that are almost like girdles. Yeah. And uh, you're kind of like, fastened up to the T and you're like, oh, I'm going to be very straight now. Of course. Yes. Lovely. Yes. Yes. Terrific. Very yes. good. A man girdle. Man. Hashtag man, man girdle. girdle. Yes. I believe they call that the Shatner. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good English accent as well. How did you, how did you uh, hone in on that skill? I used to watch a lot of Black Adder and Doctor, early, do, early Doctor Who when I was a kid. A lot of Monty Python, Flying Circus. That was... That was my jam. I was one of those indoor kids that did a lot of like, uh, um, oh, I don't know if you have like Odyssey of the Mind over here, but just like the nerdy kids that played chess and, and did a lot of science and stuff. Yeah. That was me growing up. And uh, we all used to watch Black Adder and, and Flying Circus, and that was, that was fun for us, yeah. It's done very well for you in this yeah. career choice Thank that you. you've had, yes. Obviously, um, you know, there's so many actors that we meet that have to do different accents, and usually, like an Ed Westwick, for example, has told us that he and, and many actors learned the American accent through Eminem and rap. Are you serious? Yeah, so that's why I always ask, well, who did you watch to kind of get in on that oh, skill? Wow. We have some questions here in the crowd. Just raise your hand, everybody. Don't be shy. We've, of course, got one all the way up there with the lightsaber. We will make nice. sure we get to you, sir. Is Don't worry. Darth Maul? Oh, come on. No? Just make sure this works. Oh, is it, is. Oh, is, oh Kylo Ren. Yeah. yeah. Kylo nice. Ren is up there. We'll make sure we get to you, Mr. Ren. You want to hear my Kylo Ren impression? <laughs> I, don't, I know what I have to do, but I don't know how the strength to do it. I don't know. That's, <laughs> I, I've, I've never done an Adam Driver, but he's always just very like he talks. He talks just like he's like he's just taken like a, a tranquilizer, like a horse tranquilizer, yeah. got shot into his neck. That's how he talks. I don't know. Anyway, that's spot on. <laughs> I was going to ask you about your impressions. I just didn't want to put you on the spot. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I've heard you do a mean McConaughey. All right. Uh, yeah, so here we go. my hey, friend it? Cully is a massive fan of The Walking Dead, and they were just wondering what was your favorite episode to film, and they also wanted us to say the said hi. Ooh, we'll tell them hi. Uh, it used to be well, it's, it's kind of a toss up. So there was an episode I did with Rick, uh, Andy Lincoln, that was one of my favorites, where we he and I are just going around collecting resources for Negan and the Saviors because now they've got us by the balls and we're, t we're totally in a stranglehold by them. And, um, and just getting the chance to work with not only a great actor, but a, but a great person. Like if you ever get a chance to meet Andrew Lincoln, he's the nicest guy on the planet and just a really good dude. So uh, that episode was one of my favorites, but I also love the one that we did during the, the first COVID episodes where me and Father Gabriel are trying to find supplies, of course, again. Yeah, I'm seeing a theme here. Uh, but we get uh, ambushed by the T-1000 uh, 
Um, I don't know if anyone who saw that episode where we're doing Russia Roulette, but Robert Patrick was so, I, like, initially intimidating because he's the T-1000, and I was like, he's going to be such a hard ass, and he couldn't have been more cool. Very funny guy, just, just really easy to work with, too. So that episode probably, yeah. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Great question. Thank you so much. Yes, Aaron's going to go see Mr. Wren up at the very top, who has his lightsaber in the air. What a gentleman. Oh, yeah. oh. Who's asking the question? <laughs> how, did you feel, how did you feel when you, when you, when you got the part in, in the movie, in the series? Oh, for Walking Dead or for, like, Red Skull, or what do you... The Walking Dead. Walking Dead? It was, uh, to be honest, like, one of the best days of my life. Um, a month earlier, I decided to give up acting and move to New York to pursue photography and art and writing because I was not just flat broke. I was, like, $100,000 $100, in debt. And when you're that much in debt and you don't see your way out of it, you just kind of say okay, I think I'm just going to stop whatever the dream this was and just kind of choose something else, and, and that's what I decided to do. And then this audition kind of came at the very last, like the, the, the 11th hour of my time, and I, I'd already quit acting, and then it came through that they wanted me to read for it, and I, out of obligation, I, I went, and then on my birthday, August 22nd, 2014, I think, yeah, uh, I was sick as a dog with a stomach flu, I was laying in my bed, and around 5 o'clock that night, I got a call from my manager, and she said I, I got the part, and I shot out of bed, and I instantly felt better. Like, it's, it's a really kind of interesting thing about mind over matter, too, about how your mood and your, how your outlook can really just change everything about your life. And uh, it, was, it was like winning the lottery, you know, honestly. I, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Great Thank question. You. Tell us about your first day on set. So, especially being a fan, walking into that set, I'm sure there was a little intimidation, but also kind of like, yeah, stars in the eyes. Oh cold. yeah, like on the on the plane ride over to Atlanta, I, I probably sweat through three different pairs of shirts. Like I was I was so nervous. I just was like, I'm gonna mess it up. I'm gonna mess it up because it's like one of my favorite shows. And then the very first person I met on the show was Andrew Lincoln, and he 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 stays in character the entire time he's there. He doesn't drop character once. So you, obviously most of you know he's from Bath. Bath, uh, but he's actually uh, staying in that southern accent the entire time. And when I met him, he's like, hey, how you doing? I'm Rick. Welcome to the family. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> Rick Grimes just said hi to me. Like, that was the weirdest thing ever. And then I got a chance to meet Abraham and, and, uh, and uh, oh my gosh, I'm blinking. Oh, uh, Eugene. Uh, and it was just like, then, then Daryl and Michonne and all these other people. And it was, it was the biggest trip to, to, to meet all these people. And and get a chance to then work with them. It was, it was wild, yeah. It must be a really good camaraderie and chemistry because everyone that we do uh, panels with, because there's quite a few of you sometimes, everyone seems to genuinely get along. Would, would you say backstage everyone's good? And, and do people still kind of keep in touch oh, yeah. when they've left the show? For sure. I mean, like, there's, it's like any job. Like, you get along better with some people than others, but, like, I will say we lucked out big time with the casting of that show. A lot of us uh, still very much stay in touch, and we're all, we're all friends, and we, we, we see each other at conventions, and it's, it's great, you know, so... Cool. Love to hear that. Love to hear the backstories. Any more questions, guys? Just raise your hand. Don't be shy. We've got a question. Shaun from... of the Dead over here. Yes, it's quite a few. Thank you so much, everybody. Hi, I have a very important question. All right. Would Aaron listen to Taylor Swift? <laughs> Wait, what? Would Aaron listen to Taylor Swift? Can I be honest with you? I don't even think I've even heard a single Taylor Swift song. I don't, if, if, no, no, I mean, like, if, if one came on the radio right now, I couldn't tell you who played, I, I, I mean, I'm pretty bad about that stuff, I'm sorry. So, let's just say, yeah, I'd say, he, yeah, he'd be into that, yeah, yeah. That's a very good question, though, I like that, yeah. yeah. A secret Swifty. The se is that what they're called? I think, Swifty? I don't know. I feel really old just that, even uttering that. Swift, are, are you guys called, Swi do you call yourself Swifters? Swifties? Swifties? Hell yeah. <laughs> Aaron's a Swifty. <laughs> Swifty. Talk about a secret oh, Swifty over here. Not, not so not, secret not anymore. Secret. We got one right here, I think, too. If, yes, we yeah. sure do. While we get Better to that question, what are you listening to? What is, actually, what is Ross listening to? Ross listens to a lot of Nine Inch Nails, a lot of Ministry, Depeche Mode, Flaming Lips, Blur, uh, The Cure. Uh, um, basically, just goth stuff. I'm pretty... I'm, <laughs> I like dark... Obviously. Mad at your parents all the time? <laughs> yeah. Was, they don't understand me. Oh, 
yeah, yeah. Mom, it's not a phase. Yeah, yeah. Ah. And I was one of those unfortunate kids that had like terrible acne with braces and glasses, and my, my body was growing in different shapes at different like my left arm was like a foot longer than my right arm like i'm like ah, i feel weird it was it was you ever watch big mouth that, no. that was oh it was it was like that i was like just kind of awkward as hell so this yeah. is why i think they've taken yeah. away video screens from us because we would have pulled up some kind of hilarious image oh, yeah. to show you and prove it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's but, why we don't have one yeah thank goodness yeah, you don't been, have pictures of me from when i was 14 yeah, yeah, yeah. i've been too naughty oh, yeah, sorry. hello <laughs> hello Hi. hello I've got two questions, if that's okay. I've got three answers, if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I weren't expecting that. Yeah. Um, you came in partway through the show, um, but I think it's safe to say that by the end, you were an integral part of the Walking Dead family. And I think that with the three spin-offs that are coming in, a, m a major question that I certainly want to know, because you're one of my favorites, is are we going to see Aaron again? Uh, I can't officially answer that. Sadness. But uh, <laughs> you cross your fingers and tap your heels and maybe, maybe that will happen. I think the big thing is they're going to see how those first three spinoffs go with Rick and Michonne, the Daryl one. And somehow Daryl winds up in France. How the hell did that happen? Yeah. I mean, like, they don't have, they don't have like, gas for cars, but he can get to France somehow? <laughs> what the hell happened? Daryl in France, Emily in Paris. It's, it's a whole new thing. Yeah, it's like, I mean, I, I, know that, I know he just basically just wanted to shoot in France. And like, hey, he's like, hey, can we, like, make the show, like, happen in France? That'd be cool, right? Amazing. It'd be great if, like, we just shot it in France. You know what I mean? It'd be sweet, right? I think that's what happened. And then AMC was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Here's Wait. some money. Great. <laughs> Uh, I think that's probably what happened, but yeah. Uh, I think for me, I would love to see a, a, a spinoff. What I'm trying to pitch is a show where it's me and Gracie, my daughter, and maybe she's a little bit more grown up, and I'm like kind of like old man Logan, like Wolverine. Amazing. Kind of like in my 50s or 60s, they age me up every day. I would love to see them. And like, I'm like maybe lost another like limb. and The beards come the out beards a little like bit. The beards like crazy out to here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm looking all crazy. And it's just the two of us. We've somehow gotten separated from the group. And it's just the two of us fighting walkers in Peru. I would love that. Yeah. yeah. I would love that. A foreign locale. Yeah, why not? Why France not? is taken. So if not he can France. go to France, it'd be, honestly, it'd be much easier to get to Peru than it would to get to France if you think about it. <laughs> Just saying, yeah, yeah. And my yeah. second question is, um, my friend Sammy um, is a huge Walking Dead fan and she um, got me into The Walking Dead and I was wondering if the, you would shout out to her, please. Sammy? Sammy. Sammy, if you're watching, and I think you are because she's recording me, Thank you for watching the show and thank you for turning her on to it. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, thank you, thank you yeah. Ross. Of course, thank of you. Of applause yeah. for Sammy. 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 Yeah, Sammy. Summer. Okay, okay, why Peru? I'm picturing you with a pan flute now in Peru. Why <laughs> Peru? <laughs> oh, I was just there a couple weeks ago, and oh, I, I, I love Peru. It's You're just... scouting locations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it. I, I, Cusco, Peru is one of the most magical places on earth, and I really feel like going down there and, you know, fighting walkers with a bunch of Incans. Yeah. Incan, you know, just, I think it would be amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Atlanta's very nice. I mean, Peru is Peru. So Peru is Peru. I get you. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have time yeah. for a few more questions. There's one oh, right here from this on, yeah. lovely lady. Hi there. What was it like when you joined the MCU, and um, obviously, how was your, how, how did you get into it, the character that you portrayed? I was just about to say, I'm so sorry for your loss. We got a little <laughs> bl Black Widow cosplay over here. In fair, it's funny how many people come up to my table and they're like, why did you kill Black Widow? Why did you kill Gamora? I'm like, first of all, all I did was say, if you want the Soul Stone, here's what you got to do. And they interpreted that how they wanted to, and you know, Thanos kills Gamora, Black Widow kills herself, technically, so, I mean, if you think about it. But anyway, um, that, that for me, Star Wars and Marvel was like, those were the things that I cared most about as a kid. Uh, specifically Star Wars first, because my brother made me watch that when I was five. And then a few years later, I watched uh, X-Men, the animated series.